with all the big calls on all the big races. Welcome back to another weekend feature flagship show here at the Racing Post. It is What a Shout in conjunction with our sponsors, Bet365. Dave Orton back with you on a sunny Friday morning in the capital. That's when we film here. Whew, classic weekend coming your way. Ding, ding, all change. Of course, it's now all about the flat. Well, pretty much, isn't it? Of course, it's been a big weekend in Ireland as well. We'll be giving lots of coverage to that. But get your comments in via YouTube as ever. Like and subscribe. Who have we got on the panel for you today? Paul Keeley, back in the show. Happy days, Kills. Oh, yeah. yeah, good. Had a, had a fair week. I mean, it's funny. You need to... You know, when you had a bad run, you need something to click for you, and uh, and um, it was par man getting you know getting the oh. <laughs> getting the bet three six five gold cut. Which he I, started already, which I tipped in the weekend, uh, and you know, so I said I said I, I, I said on Twitter, I said I feel like Dick Turpin. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it's filthy terrible. kills, isn't it? Well, one man that was there and had to endure it all. Of course, we had a bit of banter about you being there last weekend, Pat. How was Sandown? Uh, do you know it was it was it was just great fun. But over the two days, it was excellent, and it, it just made you yearn for the crowds being there. Really, I mean, Bryony Frost riding the two winners as well, and a dramatic Bet Three Six Five Gold Cup, and uh, just spare a thought for the poor bookmakers like ourselves at Bet Three Six Five. We paid double results, so not only did we have the well back favourite win, we had the Paul Keeley selection as well to pay out on. So just to have a few violins playing in the background for us on that one, I think. I'll tell you what, all the Kitty's Light supporters here and in the gallery and everywhere else are crying foul. Yeah. Well, the one you didn't pay out on them <laughs> is the one that should have won. Uh, listen, we'll be getting into that very much so, but it is all about looking forward to the flat this weekend. And what with rider, uh, you know, arrangements and everything, we've had to do it a little bit differently uh, this week. But yesterday, so on Thursday, basically this week, after the decks were out, we managed to go across to Dublin and speak to the rider of Thunder Moon, the top pilot that is Declan McDonough. So it's a warm water shout welcome to top Irish pilot Declan McDonough. And let's face it, if anything's going to be born out of this pandemic, it's the fact that on water shout and all these racing TV shows that you see, we can reach further afield due to the beauty of Skype. There he is. We've caught you in the car, Declan. Thanks so much for coming on, man. Thank you. Pleasure. No problem. Uh, now, Declan, I made your first ride, uh, 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 your first win, 1995. Would that be right? Correct and right, yeah. And you've got 1,444 winners. Would that be right? Uh, I didn't think it was 1,400, but maybe around 1,200. <laughs> He's certainly got it up there. I'll take them if you're giving to me for free. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll have a go at the boys and race from Interactive about that. But one thing we have got right, you've ridden 51 group winners, six at the top level. And you've got a huge chance in the Classic on Saturday at Newmarket to make that seven with, of course, Thunder Moon. Now, Declan, this is a horse that you've been instrumental in making and the win in the national stakes, that was when we all jumped on board. You cannot have thought, watch this out there, viewers, if you've not seen it yet, go back into your members section, check out the replay because how you won that day, Declan, I still have to see it to believe it. Yeah, look, it was a messy race, wasn't it, really? And um, I suppose it, it was only his... Uh, Second start, um, tremendous performance by the horse to to overcome what what he did on the day, and uh, um, he was he was very impressive on that day. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and of course he'd won his maiden just in August, didn't he? Prior to that, over the course and distance, so he's a horse that's kind of arrived late on the scene, and then of course you came over over the over the course. You've been into the dip in the Dewhurst, where the ground looked against him that day. Of course, it was soft ground. You couldn't have made up a better weather scenario for him this time around. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> he's a horse. He started off in a barrier trial on the poly track in Dundalk, and. Uh, he seemed to enjoy that uh, fast surface. So a fast surface is, is probably to his liking. Um, definitely the ground on Dewhurst Day wa not, wasn't wasn't really to, to play into his strengths. And um, I thought it was a hell of a run, all considered. Absolutely. And you just had to come away from the rail that day. And I know that, that the main protagonist did that day. But it, let's face it, the rail at Newmarket on the Rolly course, Declan, seems to be a big advantage. Now, there is a cutaway this time in the Classic, of course. You're drawn in 10 and he's yet to go over the extra furlong. Yeah, it's a lovely draw. I was, wait, I was just waiting with bated breath this morning to see the draw and uh, couldn't have been happier with where he's positioned. Um, some nice horses around him. Um, 
So um, very happy with the draw, and uh, usually the best horse wins on the tr on the track, you know. Well, I, 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 now listen, Declan, I don't want to tell you how to ride the horse, but I'm imagining when we get to two furlongs out, I'll be sitting in this chair in this studio screaming, just wait, Declan, just wait, Declan. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's a bit like you'd be playing a, a computer game, really, but it's not like that, um, unfortunately. Um, uh, lots of things can happen, so uh, just take it as, it as it comes. But he's a very straight, straightforward horse to ride. And uh, I don't envisage um, him being uh, anything tactical with him. You know, he's, he's, he's very straightforward. How straightforward is it at the moment in these COVID times with restrictions, with you getting over for just the one ride at Newmarket? Uh, as I'm speaking to you, I just, I just had my uh, COVID test done in Punchestown with uh, Dr. Jennifer Pugh, um, our, our, our medical officer over here. So uh, hopefully that goes, goes well. And... Um, so she kindly kindly did that. So that's why I'm in the car. Um, so you get tested today, hopefully results back tomorrow. And then when we come home five days later, another test. So that's pretty very, stringent. It's very interesting to hear how that happens. We wish you all the best with that. We wish you all the best on Saturday, Declan. Thanks so much for coming on. But before you go, I want to ask you about another horse, if you don't mind. Southern Lights is a horse that's definitely ticked my curiosity after his Leopardstown win uh, a, a couple of weeks back. He's one that's going forward that we should be looking for over here, isn't he? I think so, yeah. He's a lovely progressive colt. Um, you know, that was his second start, well prepared by, by Joseph. You know, just took him along gradually. Uh, he's improved over the winter physically. Um, nice, nice horse. Couldn't have done any easier on the day, you know. Um, was very pleased with how, how he put the race to bed when he got a little bit of split off the turn in Leopardstown and, and, and he quickened well. A, a, nice, a nice horse to look forward to. And he could go to the Derrenstown. Would that be the plan? I'm not sure what the plan is, but I would say maybe a trial somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Happy days. All right, Declan, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be cheering you home on Saturday. A pleasure, lads. Thanks very much. Declan McDonough then, top Irish pilot, joining us here on What a Shout. There we are then. Thumbs up. Thunder Moon. Great stuff. And uh, we will be giving you an in-depth preview with Paul and Pat as well with the 2,000 guineas coming up on the show. In fact, let's have a look at exactly what is coming your way. Hot topic, have a day off. We're really looking forward to get my teeth stuck into that with the guys. Of course, we'll be previewing, as mentioned, all the races at Newmarket for you Saturday and Sunday as well. The 1,000 comes on Sunday. We'll be looking at the Dahlia Stakes as well. We'll be giving the big calls in the studio. And of course, the all-important, we know you love them, Weekend winners. If on this classic weekend you'd like to sign up to our sponsors, Bet365, you can do so with a referral code. It's SHOUT365. Just when joining, type that in. Minimum £5 deposit for up to 100 bet credits. Terms and conditions apply. Let's have a look at the hot topic this week for you then. Have a day off. So if you're not sure about the news this week in Ireland, Horse Racing Ireland, have agreed to extend the professional jump jockeys over there in Ireland a 24-day holiday. So from the 7th to the 30th of June inclusively. That was with the um, Professional Jockeys Association over there as well. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? There's been lots of pro-warm thoughts about it coming over. Lots of top jockeys over here in Britain have said, what a wonderful idea. I think it should happen. Paul Keeley, your thoughts? Yeah, well, I think they got it right and wrong um, at the same time. <laughs> now, the, you know, we're, we're old enough, and I certainly am, to remember when the jump season in Britain ended uh, and then they didn't come back for a long while. Now... Uh, I'm not saying it should go back like that, but you know, if you're going to give them a break, give them a break in July or August uh, when it's you know likely to be baking hot. Now I can't see, you know, none of us can see any top trainer running a top horse in a three mile chase uh, when it's 100 degrees. Now you know we talk about 100 degrees, it doesn't get to 100 degrees, but you're talking about shade temperatures when they're out there in a field in a baking hot sun. Mm. All right. You know, you, you hear about horses suffering from heat stress on the flat. So I think if you're going to do it, and you should do it because everybody needs a break. Why, you, you know, how do you tell people that they have to work all year round without having yeah. one? I mean, okay, they'll get the occasional suspension and, and they're forced into one. But I mean, let's face it, let's just give them a break and a decent break. And in the height of summer when it's baking hot, because that surely has to be good for horses too. It wasn't that long ago that we had a situation at Worcester Racecourse, was it? It was a couple of years ago now. Of, of course, they've looked at that and they've reacted, so it hasn't happened since. Well, we have had we races. We had to stop, didn't we, after yeah. two races? We have had races abandoned uh, because it's too hot. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, so if you're going to abandon races as you're too hot, then you must be thinking, well, hang on a minute. Well, at what point do you say it's too hot? Mm. Right? You're still running an awful lot of horses at a time of year uh, when they're being asked, you know, a big question. When you're asking horses to run a long distance, uh, you know, quick quick ground may be, but, I mean, it, it is hard for So them. the welfare of the jumpers comes into it. And yeah. there will be people now uh, probably out there screaming at the telly saying, well, I've, you know, we have these wet winters now. When am I going to be able to run my house, uh, to, to, uh, my horse, uh, you know, on quick ground? So that's the welfare. So they got the premise right in Ireland. We like the idea of it, basically. Yeah, I, I like the idea of giving jockeys a break. I think that's, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, nobody has to work 12 months a year apart from jockeys, do they? I mean, everyone gets a holiday. But I mean, if, if, if trainers have... Uh, retain jockeys and they have horses that they're going to run throughout the year, then when does a jockey get time off? So, mm. you know, turning down turning down rides is not something they like to do, is it? Well, that's the other toss of the coin. Let's come to Pat on this. We had Aidan Coleman, friend of the show, came out. He, he tweeted in the week, I think it's a great idea. It's, it, this should have happened years ago. However, there will be the journeyman jockeys, if you like, the more, you know, you know ones that rely on the rides and the fee that will be saying, well, it's all right for the top five jockeys to be saying this. But what about this, Pat? Who's going to pay the wages? Well, that, that's it, exactly. I, I mean, I, I agree with the concept of it. We should all have a holiday. And, um, you know, everyone has a close season, don't they, in every sport. Um, but I, I thought that maybe it could be streamlined a little bit more. Maybe if a jockey has had only X number of rides or X number of winners, he should be allowed to exercise his right as a, as a self-employed rider that, you know, he, if, he, if he's feeling fresh enough and well enough, he may have just come back from injury, let's say. And next thing you know, he's got to have the 24 days off. I think it could have been more how many rides has he had in recent months and so forth. I know that's sort of making it a little bit more streamlined and defined. I get the idea. It's a good concept. We don't want to be seeing tired horses and tired jockeys running. And I get the problems with the uh, the healthy, uh, with the heats and the, the hard ground and so forth. Maybe it could just be a little bit more defined. I've got two children, right? One would sleep all day, every day, every week. The other's up at six o'clock every morning, still going like a Duracell bunny at six o'clock in the evening. Like the, the, the one, you know, everyone's different. So maybe maybe there could have been a little bit more leniency with a few of it. But the concept I do agree with. Yeah, so we like the premise of this, basically. We think it could be a goer over here, but it just needs a little bit more refined. What about the courses as well? This is It, it made me think about this. There'll be certain summer jumps courses in the period over here. Well, hang on a minute. This is our part well, of the fiction. Newton Abbott is the one that comes to mind. Worcester, um, you know, courses that are either underwater or, or one of them, Worcester, or Newton Abbott, that gets so much rain that you can't... Yeah. You know, what about you Utoxeter, though, a premier jumps course, that jumps, you know, summer jumping, market raising as well. Would this be give them a chance for the grass to recover, for example? Or is moaning about overwater? Well, yeah, I mean, we? they've got, you know, I mean, market raising have a couple of good races in, in July, don't they, as well? Like, you know, that, that you know, I would, I would say, you know, I would wipe out the whole of July. I'd give them a month off. That's what I would do, mm. uh, you know, in what is largely the hottest part of the year. But... You know, a lot of people are going to disagree with that. But um, yeah. I, did, I do think for both horses and jockeys, for, for welfare of horses, um, I don't think they should be running when it's that hot uh, over jumps. Really interesting, isn't it? So we applaud the idea. We'll be fascinated to watch how it happens. BHA, if you're listening, we could be on something here. We all like a day off, but the timing has got to be right. OK. Racing clues, and this is going to be an absolute belter. Listen, last week we said on the show this brings down the curtain on the jump season. However, we've got to review it because that Bet365 Gold Cup, you've mentioned it at the top of the show. Man, my life, the reaction to that. We watched it here in the studio. We were calling it live. The whole of the Water Shout team, as you probably know, throughout the winter has been calling Kitty's Light for the Bet365 Gold Cup. I said at the show... Last week, if he gets detached four out, don't worry, he'll be coming, he'll be coming. I've stood up in this seat, Kills. I've collected the money. And what happened? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was the only one that couldn't have him. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, you're on the winner. It's uh, a disgrace, and, man. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's so hard. The Sandown Studios had no choice, basically, to do what they did. Uh, and it was just yeah. unfortunate that Potterman put his head right in front of Kitty's light on the line. Now, yeah, but the other point is, I mean, Enrilo's lost the race. If he hadn't have made such a mistake, a two out, he'd have won easily, wouldn't he? Oh, uh, unless he is the sort that does pull himself up in front, yeah. we don't know. But, I mean, he was going to, he, he looked like he was going to win easily. So the best horse didn't get the race, and the horse that suffered interference didn't get the race. And, you know, but what do you do? I mean, you can't, you know, can, can you change the rules? You know, you can't give the stewards to say, well, that one would have won. 
Uh, otherwise, you'd be promoting horses to finish fifth and sixth in races. This could you? have been the hot topic itself, Kills, yeah. couldn't it? The rules. And is there, should there be some sort of dispensation? Do you know what I mean? Should there be so like, like a grey area that they're allowed? We're so rigid, aren't we? And they're probably ancient, these rules, aren't they? You have to, I think you have to be rigid because, it, you know, it comes to a point where you can say lots of times, well, that horse definitely yeah. would have won, but it's ended up finishing fifth yeah. uh, because the winner did something to it. Now, you can put the winner behind it, but can you really... <sighs> Can you really promote it by that much? I don't. I don't know. This is where the punter in me is coming know. out. Before we go to Pat uh, for the final word on this, but I, I, I have to be honest. Right? If, if I wasn't on Kitty's lot, I'd be one hundred percent with you. The rules must be rigid, but my goodness me, I was praying for some sort of small line of grey area somewhere. I think, like everyone else, was Christian Williams and the team. We massively feel for you. What a horse you've got there! Uh, and Rillo, as Kills says, five monstrous old. performance. Five year old. I mean, yeah, Kitty's like that. incredible. Old, it? Incredible. I hope he. Yeah, I, I hope he goes on because you know he's got a massive career ahead of him if he can. If he can be kept that sweet and just kept, you know, because all the all the big races are are there for him because he does finish so strongly. You have to think that next year this will be the target. Can they keep him as it's a such a tough task, isn't it, mm. to get the horse Bullshit. back in the right Bullshit. frame? So Kitty's like, there's a big one in him. Pat, what was it like on course? Well, it, it was just bizarre watching. I funny, I, I had quite a good view of the races they jumped the last and I, I, immediately across the line, I thought, yeah, that that would be disqualified. And then it was just a case of who actually is going to finish second. It would have been straightforward, of course, if Kitty's had. But it's just very hard, isn't it, to say to a neutral, Kitty's light is an inferior horse at the weights on the day than Potterman. And, you know, I, I saw Christian Williams after the race, and there's not much he can say to him, really, other than, look, you're a five-year-old. Hopefully you can come back and win it next year. But I say it's it's a complicated one, isn't it? But I, I do feel for Kitty's like, and the ultimate insult, it went up four pound in the weights uh, as a result of that run. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, what, what, what do you do? I mean, there's, there's there's a there's a good guy in me thinking, surely you don't have to put Kitty's like up four pound. Have, haven't they suffered enough not winning the race? It, and, and Potterman gets one pound for winning. Yeah. It's, it's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're Alan King, you're thinking, aye, aye, this has been the best day of my life. Uh, I mean, King, he did say afterwards, didn't it? It feels a bit weird, but that's how it is. I'm sure he's had plenty to go against him. Concentrating on the day then, Kiels, uh, we saw Altior back. Yeah, we saw Altior back. Don't really know what to make of him. Nobody's really expecting him to make the running, were they? Um, I suppose they did that because of the cheek pieces. Um, did it suit him? Not sure. Um, he looked to like go with... Plenty of zest, didn't he? He looked to be enjoying himself. Um, but let's face it, he's 11. You know, horses do not go on at the top level uh, at that age very yeah. often. He just looks like a, you know, all over a two mile two horse. Well, now, yeah, he? he looks. He, he looks like he probably wants further, but he also looks like he's not as good as he was. I mean, yeah. that, and that is only to be expected. It's nothing. But wasn't it great the... to see him back attacking his face? It was great. To, it was great to see him back and looking like he enjoyed it. And, and look, he didn't. He didn't not have the pace to go two miles, did he? Like you know what I mean? He's just not the horse he was. It's as simple as that. And when Paul Keeley's pouring his Guinness, you know, at this point, looking forward to the Bet 36 Gold Cup, was he was he thinking Grianatine is now finally going to come good? Ah, well, I mean, it was, just, the faith. Uh, it was just annoying because I backed I backed so royal because I just thought it was perfect conditions for him, and he he, he looked to run a bit flat to me. Uh, but then Green Team comes along. I mean, he's probably the top rated British two miler in chase in in training now, and obviously I'm telling people to. You know, back him at fifties for the for the champion chase in in like November. Yeah, and uh, he ran a blinder there. And just and he ran a blinder there. Forth. Just didn't get oh. in the frame. And then he comes out and does that. It's you know he's obviously a very good horse. He needs a good pace to run at, doesn't he? He yeah. could well be, you know, he could well be in the Ryanair next year because I think he's going to stay. Yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see what Paul Nichols decides to do with him. It's a great card. We obviously saw Frodon come back and did what Frodon does best: look beat and then sort of come back and showed oh, real Frodon, toughness. Just wanted Brian it. E, a quick double. It was he, Frodon wanted it more, didn't he? I think it's as simple as that. Possibly, yeah. Like, you know, what I mean, I like Mister Fisher, but but I love Frodon. And is that being a bit harsh on Fisher though? Because a lot of horses going up against Frodon. You know, yeah, Frodon's but he came to win it. He came to win it, didn't he? I mean, it looked to me Been like keen he was, again. Yeah. At least he's back on track now, though. Yeah, he's back on track. He jumped well. He jumped well. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, look, he's a nice horse. I just wonder whether his 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 heart is in it um, for these big races now. I'm just just query that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was the bet. Three six five big day at Sandown, the end of the UK jump season. Of course, it has kept going this week in Ireland. Wow, where do we start with Punchestown? Who knew after the Cheltenham Festival, all you have to do is travel your horses. It's that simple. 
Just, it's quite simple. You get an Irish horse, you put them on the boat, you put them on the plane, they're going to find an extra leg. You get a British horse, you put them on the plane, you put them on the boat, we find an extra leg. We're taking it to them, finally. Hey, yeah, Clanders Oboe. Um, wonderful. I mean, obviously, I was singing singing the praises of Clanders Oboe. When I said when I, when I said here a few weeks ago, you know, he's as good as anything else in Ireland, the abuse I got on social media, not so much abuse, <laughs> more ridicule, like, you know, from, oh, can from Irish members. And I wanted to go, I, I actually thought, you know, am I going to be that pathetic and go back and retweet every single one of them? Like, you know, and I, and I did. Nearly you? did. <laughs> no, I nearly, I nearly I thought about it. But I, I, I sat there and I've never been so satisfied at a result. I had a tiny bit on Clanders Oboe. And I watched him, and he did, he did as a horse. He's always been a very, very good horse. And, you know, when he won his first King George, they're all saying, look, he's got, to, he's got to hit the front at the last minute. I don't know. And here he goes, makes some running. Those cheek pieces made a hell of a difference. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he is a very, very, very good horse. And that win is going to discourage him come, from coming over from Ireland to take him on at Kempton, where he absolutely loves it. And he's, you know, he's only short on a couple of points. He's five to one. You, because you advised a couple of weeks back to put him up for the King George. Did you take a bit yeah, of the he was, Yeah, I, I did. But he's five now. He'll be near a five to four. Yeah, there he, are, it's a good where, shout that kills. Where are the British horses that are going to beat him? And doing what he did to Album Photo and Ken Boy and Fakir Di Dairies uh, at Punchestown, when he's bang on and the, the race that he's absolutely primed for every year, mm. well, but the Irish aren't going to come over. Yeah. He's just going to be. He's just going to be a very short price favourite. And Anthony Honeyball thinking it's this is easy this game. I'll just go over to Ireland and nick their Absolutely. handicaps. Yeah, this is that. Here's one that really annoyed me because I spotted. Thought, hang on a minute. These British, some of these British horses are running off lower than their, their British marks. Yeah. Uh, you know, so he was four pound lower than Sully Dock, of course. Sully Dock, sorry. So Sully Dock's four pound. But I back Ray a time. He finished second. Uh, you know, creep through the race and uh, and finished well, but nowhere near. But I'd also backed Dostal Phil, who runs later on today, uh, based on the red run form, uh, and he was one place behind Sully Dock. So big eye catcher in that. Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, I and mean, I'm, 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 you know, I'm hoping he will win today. But even so, um, why didn't I spot that as well? Like, you so, know Kills, I mean? just a final word on this. It, it, uh, so much was made of the demolition uh, of the Irish job at Cheltenham and in handicaps in particular, and the Grand National. Is it? it, it, it is it just? Is it just cyclical? Or? Look, I think, I, I, look, I think at the end of the day, years and years ago, the big owners um, had more horses in Britain than, than they have in Ireland, and now it's the other way around. So the chances are, when you get your small field graded races in Ireland, they're going to be stronger in depth than they are in Britain. Uh, and I think that sort of panned out most of the time um, at Cheltenham. So, you know, at the, the power bases are now in Ireland. Uh, it doesn't mean our trainers are no good. I mean, that's nonsense. Paul, you know, Paul Nichols has won a stack of gold cups mm. and King George's, etc. Nicky Henderson's champion hurdle record is ridiculous. Uh, you know what I mean? They haven't suddenly become bad trainers. They haven't got the depth of quality that, that some of the Irish yards are. I mean, look, I mean, how many winners has Willie Mullins had this week already? Three days at the time of filming, 13 grade one winners, all for different owners. Exactly. Uh, you know, and horses that he ran in handicaps at... Cheltenham, oh. um, like Galloping the Shop, for instance. How impressive was he? Uh, you know, he was very, very interesting. And then he's got Classical Dream, comes off the subs bench, hasn't seen him for ages. Um, you know what I mean? So they have so much power. You know, our, our trainers, our top trainers, do not have that many good horses. Yeah. Okay. So I'll come back to Kills and just what he thinks about what we should do with the Punchstown form. But Pat, let's bring you in here. As mentioned, uh, uh, Paul Townend, congratulations, Paul. You've wrapped up the Irish Jockeys Championship over there with the firepower they have, the Mullins team over there. It's been incredible, hasn't it? What are we doing with horses like a Gallopin uh, Deschamps, who looks like he could, he's going to have the world before him over fences, maybe as a novice next year? Could he still go the, uh, the staying hurdle route? However, Classical Dream comes out, having absolutely gone totally missing, and then wins as he likes in the first time and now looks like he's the next big bucks oh it's, it's just been an amazing meeting this puncher sound hasn't it and some of these horses have just been absolutely dazzling i mean kill crit in the bumper a classical dream i mean that was just absolutely amazing to watch you try and find flaws in the race saying oh well that one didn't run well that one didn't run well but it was just the demolition job wasn't it and uh you, you know, in organ aim. I mean, you look at Punchestown, you know, it's the last day of the season, really, in terms of the quality meeting. And maybe horses are tired, they're over the top. But it's just been a marvellous spectacle. And some of these horses, they've introduced themselves. So we had one 
yeah, on Thursday, Capadona of Willie Mullins, one by 12 lengths in a handicap. He could be absolutely anything. So notebooks out there ready, just keep playing punches down backwards and forwards. I, I suppose you could get a whole host of winners out of these. So it's just an amazing meeting. And uh, we're not done yet there, of course. Anti-post-wise, Pat, of course, Monkfish got sunk by Cole Reavy. It now looks like the, uh, the great mayor is going off to the paddocks. Uh, of course, we had Envoy Allen was sunk. Uh, looks like he's got a problem. What have the anti-post markets done? Well, again, you wouldn't make, pay too much attention to Monkfish's defeat. I mean, it wasn't necessarily his ideal set of circumstances. He'll come back all guns blazing. That, that being said, of course, he wasn't overly impressive at Cheltenham either, was he? So maybe the hype, uh, we should just tone his his uh, credentials down somewhat. But uh, it's amazing with this, you know, as soon as a horse crosses the line, uh, everyone wants to be on him for Cheltenham after an, an impressive win at Punchestown and what have you. So Antipose Bank is quite vibrant, but uh, we, we had a torrid time of it at the festival last year. We were too big, some of the horses. So we're going to be a little bit cagey with these Willie Mullen horses when we get asked them for any of their anti-post races. What they're going to go for, of course, remains to be seen. Classical dream, why, why not stay hurdling? Do you have to go over fences? So they're, they're probably going to be favourite for everything, in the, including the boat race, I would imagine. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's interesting <laughs> life in Bet365, though, about the Mullins horses next year. Uh, uh, a final word then, because, of course, Shaka Bossoir bounced back, showed what he's all about. Alaho, they thought he was the next coming, dropped him back to two miles. But is this a case of a great spectacle punches down? We love to see them in the sun, jumping over there. It's, you know, it's the crescendo of the Irish jump season. But is this sometimes what we call pinch assault form with Cheltenham next month? <sighs> you know, I, I, you know I, I, I was always told when I was a kid, you know, ignore everything after Cheltenham. It's, it's not right there because they're all primed for that. I'm not sure it's a, that's 100% true, but there's no doubt whatsoever. It's extremely difficult to keep taking horses to festivals, and now we've got a Dublin festival as well. You know, so Monkfish blew everybody away there. Right, he suddenly he doesn't look yeah. so good at Cheltenham, and then he gets beat by a mare, by the way, who was who was actually officially came out best at the weights anyway, given the money, given the money the weight she was. There's a pound between them or something. There's a pound between yeah. them, so it's very very hard um, to keep going. You know, we used to the, we we come used to these horses running up these massive sequence of mm. wins uh, because a lot of races in is uncompetitive. But when you go from festival to festival to festival, it takes something special to keep on doing it. And, you know, it probably ruined Sprinter Sacra a few years ago, going from, from Cheltenham to Aintree to Punchestown. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 was, I was told that he was shaking in the, uh, in, in the winner's enclosure afterwards, uh, after Punchestown. You know, remember, he, meant he was a laboured win as well. And, you know, his problems may well have started there. Like, you know, so, you know, there is a, there is a point where you say, these horses can't have run to their best. But some of them have. Yeah. And, you know, it'll always be the case that some will, some won't. Um, the massive eye catcher for me, James De Berlo. I'm massively into him now. I mean, Does he go really, Arkel though, Kills? Uh, you wouldn't have thought so. You remember Footpad finished fourth in that race before dropping back in trip. Um, you can't say he didn't stay three mile. Um, he wasn't make, he, he just sluiced through the field, didn't he? Like a miles better horse than, yeah. than a lot of them. But obviously Classical Dreams, one, is very good. Uh, and two, he, he wasn't making any further ground on him at the end. So the marsh looks absolutely perfect for me. Uh, I think he's still a fair price for that. Um, he'd be nearly favourite in a year's time. I'm sure that he's a very good horse. National Do not finish. We'll be absolutely loving this, Kills, and, and they'll be loving to hear about it. So anti-post-wise for you, some chess pieces have moved in the right direction. Yes, they have. Yeah, yeah. It's unusual for me. I don't tend to get involved that early, but I did, you know, I just thought, James, there was a big price for you. Nine, nine times in the first two in a row in France. Um, from listed level all the way up to grade one. You don't do that without being a very, very, very good horse. Mm. Uh, and I think he proved that yep. uh, on Thursday. And how lovely to go into the off-season with that run next to his name. They'll be very excited. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If he can jump the fence, it's game on. Jumps fans, hasn't it been absolutely fantastic? What was your highlight of Sandow? What was your highlight of the Punchstown Festival? Get your comments in on YouTube below. Flat fans, <coughs> your time to come back into the show because new market previews start with the three o'clock, the Jockey Club States Group 2 over mile four. And there is a horse at the top of the market. Well, I'm assuming he's going to be at the top of the market. Pat Cooney, that really on figures, ought to win. Yeah, pile driver is... Um... He's got a mixed CV, really, hasn't he? Two of his wins have been very, very good. Um, he looks the mile and a half horse of the race. Perhaps he didn't stay in the St. Ledger last year. Uh, as you say, on official ratings, he's £7 and plus in hand. He's not run for 196 days, however. And I don't know. I'm I'm a bit lukewarm about him. Some of his, uh, say, his best form is reads very, very well. 
but it's uh, it's a mixed bag with him. I, I think at his price, he's favourite. He merits being favourite on balance of overall form. I think there's others in the race that are more appealing at their prices, really. I think Saron Priestley, he's got that recent win to his name. He probably wants further. He probably wants a mile six, but he's a Mark Johnson horse. He'll be probably going off in front, as indeed Piledriver has done in the past. So it's going to be a fast run race, this one. I lean towards Saron Priestley. He did beat Ocean Wind on his reappearance. And Ocean Wind, we saw him chasing home Stradivarius, ran with a lot of honour that day. So that form's got a solid look about it. A mile six are dropping down to a mile and a half, always a worry. But um, I don't know, throwing Al Khan of William Haggis, all-weather horse. I don't know, an intriguing race. I think you can find flaws in pile driver at its current price, though. Let's get some help from Paul Keeley then. When looking at this race, you're obviously, the eyes are drawn to pile driver, aren't they? Well, they are. I mean, he's, he's, I think he's seven pound clear on official ratings. Um, he was underrated all of last year, probably because he was trained by William Muir, not Aidan O'Brien or Sir Michael Stout or John Gosden. Um, but the trainer proved that he can produce the goods when he's got a decent horse. I mean, he, he ran fantastically well for a, you know, most times last year, uh, won a couple of good races. And he's a really decent horse, but he, yeah. he, he has got to prove that, you know, A, he's trained on um, from three to four, B, he's fit. Uh, and we've got a horse who I think is very good in Sir Ron Priestley. You've got to remember, he, he's only, he, he won you know, three in a row and then he ran second to Logician in the St. Legend and then he missed the whole of last season, um, had his problems and he come back and I was really impressed with that win at Nottingham. I yeah. thought he won very easily. Um, I actually backed Ocean Wind. Uh, and, but he was just, he just looked all class to me uh, and he looked very classy last um, two years ago as well. Uh, so with that run under his belt, I would give him the edge. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't like these horses like um, uh, Al Zarakwan coming from the all-weather after. He has got a turf win to his name, Al Zarakwan. He, he has, but, you know, a while ago, run into a, I mean, it was only a handicap off a mark of 95 last time, to be honest. Like, you yeah. know, I mean, I think the front two is where to concentrate on. And I think fitness um, is guaranteed with a Johnston runner. There's a bounce issue, I suppose. Mm. Um, but I thought he didn't have a hard race at Nottingham. Uh, and I just think it could be very good. Yeah, Ocean Wind is the key, I think, because, of course, he chased home um, Stradivarius in, uh, at, at, at the Cigaro Stakes on Wednesday. Great to see him back, by the way, wasn't it? And what a turn of foot he's still got, as the sectionals proved. I, I think he's rock solid. I, I, I'm su almost surprised they've come here because the Yorkshire Cup via the Gold Cup looked like a bit of a gimme for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you and know... They looked at this and just gone, this is a this is our prize. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a prize to win, but you know Mark Johnson, he could easily go to the Yorkshire Cup as well. Paul Nichols of the flat yeah. game, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know and yeah, probably taking a hurdle away from route as well. Yeah, so Paul Driver, he is back. Lots of you will really, really fancy him, but we think Sir Ron Priestley is the one. 3.40 on Saturday, time for the first classic of the British flat season. It's the 2000 Guineas, one of my favourite races of the entire year. Flat or jumps, whatever you want, it's an absolute belter. No St Mark's Basilica, of course, last year's Dewhurst winner, but the second and third do reappear. We've heard from Declan McDonough, you'll know from that piece that I'm keen on Thunder Moon. Just rain, rain, stay away. I'll give it to Paul Keeley to take the floor. Yeah, I mean, I just thought last year's two-year-olds did little else but confuse us all year, didn't they? Did they? I mean, beating each other, you know, one way or the other. You've got Thunder Moon winning the national stakes from Wembley and St Mark's Basilica, and then they go to the Dewhurst, St Mark's Basilica wins it from Wembley and Thunder Moon. Obviously, ground was very different there. Mm. Um, but we ended up, it was eight to run the field, um, basically, from once, once racing had finished, uh, at the flat season had finished. Uh, and we've now got a favourite in Wembley who took four starts to get to break his duck in a maiden. Uh, and then a month after winning that maiden, just his form took off. And if you watch that national stakes, he's parked behind a bunch of horses. I mean, in a in a, another day, you could have said he could have won that. He could have gone very close. He could have been much closer. He beat Thunder Moon next time. I think he's probably the right favourite. Well, the vibes are the vibes are right um, in the last couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, it's it's the one they've been talking about. I wonder. I wonder how good any of them were last year. That's that's what worries me. And when you look at you know Aidan O'Brien's recent Guineas winners, uh, Magna Grecia never won another race. Uh, Saxon Warrior never won another race. Churchill uh, won the Irish Guineas, a six-runner Irish Guineas at the age of forty-nine, and then never won another race. Uh, so he he ended up with better horses for later in the season than his Guineas winners. He might be the one for the day. Yes. But I, I, you know, I'm not excited about last year's two-year-old form. So. I go in for Mutasabek, 
who who blew everybody away. And when I first saw the race, I thought, well, it's a four-runner race. It ain't no big deal, is it? It's what, yeah, six lengths or, or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? But he put in some pretty good splits by all accounts. Mm. Um, sub 11 seconds was penultimate furlong. And there was a six furlong handicap on the car, one by a four-year-old uh, who absolutely bolted up, went up to a mark of 101. And Mutasaba was more than a second faster and carried 13 pound more. So I think we've got time on our side. Like, you know, it was a very, very good performance, probably better than the uh, handicappers allowed for it. And I think if he stays the extra furlong, he has got that, he has got that turn of foot for fast ground and he acts on the track. And I think he'll run a big race. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? What what, what Kiel says about last year's two-year-old form, remember, it was that truncated season. They all got rushed to basically to the first week of June. They didn't have the early seasons. Are there some backward sorts wanting to, waiting to come out? We'll certainly find that in the Phillies equivalent. I echo everything you say. Pat is still a deep race. We've got Master of Seas, of course, the Craven winner in there. Uh, William Book has chosen him. One ruler, though, comes out, of course. He was a top-notcher. He's won at the course. And you've got the likes of Battlegrounds, second string, so we think, with Frankie on for Aidan O'Brien. Yeah, and it's just a fascinating race. And it's, it's ideal. We, we've had a few guineas over the years, haven't we, where it's just been non-betting events. This is completely different. You do look at Muta Sabik and you think, well, he is just the wild card, isn't he? He's had, his, his form was over seven furlongs. Um, he hasn't gone on fast ground before. The pedigree would indicate he probably would be better at it. So a mild fast ground, a very interesting runner. He's drawn in stall 12. I think the draw, it, it was shaping up to be quite an important factor in this because most of the jockeys you read about saying, oh, I'd rather I'd rather be stand side, i.e. a high number. But you look at it, Wembley 8, Thunder 10, Battle 15, Mutasa Beat 12. So it's not really drawing a line through any of them. I suppose Master of the Seas, he's come out worse than that in stall number two. I suppose William Buick might be regretting uh, picking him over one ruler who's in seven. So the draw, not really a factor. As we've touched upon, they're much of a muchness really based on their two-year-old form. I would imagine wherever Wembley is, Thunder Moon is going to be pretty much upsides. A hard race to nominate. I think Battleground might be the one for me, really. You've got Frankie aboard. It was an excellent run in the Breeders' Cup as well. He, he looked the part as a juvenile, didn't he, at Royal Ascot? Uh, there wouldn't be much between them. Uh, certainly Mutter Sabik would be a cracking result for bookmakers because I don't suppose too many people had even heard of the horse up until a month ago. So he'd be a good result. We're in good shape on the race, anti-post-wise, so I think we'll price the race as we see it. Wembley merits being favourite because you have to start with the Dewhurst and work backwards, really. So he, he's there at the top of the market with Ryan Moore aboard, but Battleground appeals to me at around about his price, I think. But a wide open race. Would be a topically named winner of the Classic then, wouldn't it? Wembley, crowds are back there soon. Will you be cheering him on? Let us know. Big call time. I'll start, if you don't mind. I think Punchestown is, uh, has ticked all of our imagination, hasn't it? Now, Enigamine came out on Thursday and did what he was expected to do. He's an 11 to 4 on shot, but it's good to see him back, wasn't it, after the, the absentee, uh, of course, from the Arkle. Now, we've got Shishkin going into the champion chase division next year. We've got Enigamine, we think will be going into the champion chase uh, division next year. It's going to be an absolute battle royal, this, isn't it? Let's make the meet, for goodness sake. Is there any way that we can get it on before Cheltenham? You know, this needs to happen, doesn't it? These are the two great big white hopes coming in. You know, everyone wants to see this matchup. It didn't happen with Envoy, you know, and, and, and Shishkin. This is the one that will happen. Great British Racing need to get on this. It's, this reminds you a little bit of Sugar Ray and Marvin Agler, that sort of thing. We this is a great opportunity for uh, for racing kills. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I don't think it's necessary for them to get it on beforehand. Um, I don't particularly want it to be necessary beforehand because at the start of the season I tipped Shiskin to go unbeaten for the whole of 2021, and, and rather we didn't have to take Energy Mean on before then. Um, because so, <laughs> um, there's a chance that he might get Oh, some. there's more than a chance. Yeah. I mean, this is a very yeah. good horse. There's no doubt about you it. You can't call it, can I you? Think Shishkin, Dave, I think, I think Shishkin know. will be fav, um, but if, if the Shiskin that turned up at Aintree turned up, Energy Mean will thrash him. Like, you know, he may well have been over the top at Aintree, but that wasn't good at all, was it? Right. It, no, yeah. but it, 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 a lot of people will be thinking that's harsh on Shishkin, who they do believe is, you know, the next LT. Yeah. Oh, no, no, this is not a massive fan. Mean has not him. come up against a, a, a calibre of that. No, he it? hasn't, but I mean, he's bashed everything that he's come up against. Yeah. And again, he's put, he's impressed people. You like, could have a match race with the two of them, couldn't you? Like One goes on in front. Why not? You could. Why not? You, you could. Well, I mean, let's face it, if they both get there and they're both unbeaten, it's 14 to 1 by the two anyway, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so it, do, it doesn't matter. It, it, it is, yeah, it's, it'll be fascinating. 
Uh, I hope it happens. I hope they both stay sound. That's and, it. And I hope they're both unbeaten when they get there. Yeah, it's massively exciting. So come on then. Cheltenham, Aintree, Punches Town, wherever they want to go, let's make sure that those two clash and we'll see who comes out on top. Paul Keeley. Yeah, I just want to double down uh, on James Duberle. I know I said it a couple of weeks ago, but I'm even stronger now and he's still a big price. Uh, I'd say Marsh over Arkle now. Um, I don't see him going for the RSA. Uh, I think he's a very, very good horse and you should be backing him. Gallop and Deschamps looks like the potential RSA one, I think, doesn't he? So, look, yeah, loads of cards there. Some t two big calls for you. Pat Cooney. Yeah, I, I like everything about uh, jump racing at the moment, apart apart from some of these bad starts that the uh, that we seem to be getting. And we had a bad start on Tuesday at Punchestown, and it, it, it's pertinent really because there was a horse that ran in the race that finished seventh. He was favourite at Cheltenham in the Martin Park, and he finished tenth. The horse is called Gentleman to Me, Willie Mullins and J.P. McManus, and he he got loose beforehand. And anyone who were back there must have been thinking, "Oh, please don't run, please don't run, please don't run." Well, he did run, but he lined up, and the starter let them go. He was about 10 lengths behind them. That being said, he came there cruising off the final bend in front, and then the petrol gauge went to empty. He's run a mighty race, and, you know, he, he's only one, rated 135. The handicapper can't put him up for that. He, he's not going to put him down. But that, this is a horse with tons of ability, and I just can't help but think he could be the handicapper for next year. So, gentleman to me. And you just watch him. It was in race three at Punchestown on uh, Tuesday, running loose beforehand. You were hoping he wasn't going to run. He did, and he ran a belter. All those people that went through the gamut of emotions watching that race <laughs> and backed him, and just like, thanks, Pat, for bringing that one up. Uh, uh, before we end uh, the big calls, is this something that we just have to put up with in, you know, in jump race? We're talking about livestock animals charging a tape, aren't we, under hungry jockeys. Are we ever going to get it to everyone's taste? Uh, no, we're not. It's, it's, you know, there are, you know, sometimes I think the starter can get it wrong. You know, why don't you just let them go? I mean, there was a case... Um, there was a race at Aintree when they did that and it looked all perfect to me and and, and they didn't. Uh, I don't like the standing starts though. I mean, we had another one at Punching Stand and, and one of them 10-10 turned around. Uh, that can sometimes happen when they have a standing start. Mm. Um, I believe he's. I, be, I believe he might be out again tomorrow. Um, but, you know, he was a well fancy runner. Nobody got a run for the money. Um, we saw it in the yeah. top of Aintree as well, didn't we? And yeah, there's some of the big races. Yeah, that might have been that might have been the one actually. The top of them, I thought they were when they were walking in. I thought it was fine. Caribbean but boy was a, are, a strange one there. There are occasions when jockeys aren't going to, you know, they want to get their position and they're going to go too soon. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 it, it's very difficult. Let's start putting jumpers in stalls. Uh, you need a big set of stalls. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. So it used to happen on the all weather, didn't it? When they did that. I mean, I'm, it's, it's, it's funny. I had a, t I had a terrible Cheltenham. Uh, I had a, an average Aintree. Started well. Grand National Day was a wipeout. Uh, but it's really um, reignited my enthusiasm for jumps. Now we've reached the end of the season because I thoroughly enjoyed punches down. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so, amazing how it can change, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so I so, already can't wait for the next season. Yeah. So we're sticking on the jump season for the big calls. Three of them just come your way. Let's switch to Sunday then. The beauty of the first weekend in May is we have the 2,000 guineas on the Saturday and the 1,000, the Phillies' time to shine on the Sunday. However, precursing that will be the 3 o'clock. It is the Dahlia Stakes. A really good race every year kills, isn't it? It's a bit of a sort of trial race for Royal Ascot, isn't it? And, but, and, and going forward, the Falmouth and all these great yeah, Phillies races yeah. that we have. Yeah, They'll end up in the, is it the Duchess of Cambridge, is it? Duchess of Cambridge. Yeah, I always Cambridge. wonder what it's called this year. Yeah. <laughs> but but that is the race. And and one horse that looks like it's got it mapped out again is Queen Power. She was beaten in this race last year. Right. However, I think Kills, this is an easier field. I'm a big fan of Lavender's Blue. I'll get my selection right out the way. <sighs> However, everything went right for on the all weather this time, unlike when she was beaten at Lingfield. Watch that back. It's still harrowing memories of watching Jim Crowder get no run on that. It all went right for her this time at Kemp. It's lovely to see her back. And, and she she's well up to winning, but a queen power on her day, I think. I don't think it went right for her in the race last year, Terra Bellum, if you remember. It was, a it was a trappy race. And Sir Michael Stout hasn't hit the ground running this season. Oh. This is her time to shine. She's a good thing. Uh, I, I did wonder what I was going to say. You're going to tell us who your good thing is. is queen I just think she, she wins didn't win a, She didn't win a race last season, did she? Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that worries me. But, I mean, Sir Michael Stout, I mean, I think he only needs one. He, you know, he's... You know, a, a winner today, if he's got any runners today, and he, he, that's more winners in April than he, he's had in 
25 years or something. Like, you know, he, yeah. he's just, he's been going really, really well. I mean, really sort of hit the ground running, which he doesn't normally do in April. No, I mean, it's been a, it's, it's been know, a very I mean, tough year for Sir Michael, if obviously. His, if his May is, is, yeah, of course it has, yeah. Uh, if his May is as good um, as it usually is in relation to April, then watch out. Yeah, he's, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's impressive. It's, He's been he's been doing incredibly well. So yeah, it, 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 it's uh, it's def definitely a horse to fear. Um, I'm a bit like you, Lavender's Blue. God, but I'm so sick of backing her and seeing her not getting a run. And like, she has to have know. cover, doesn't she? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you know, but I come down. I thought Lady Beaufort just kept on improving last year. Um, she disappointed when favourite in a in a handicap of from like eighty five or something at this track last year, but got all sorts of trouble and it, it, it wasn't her run. And then she just carried on improving. She won a group race uh, later on in the season. She ran really well at the track on ground that I'm sure doesn't suit her bottomless, bottomless ground. Uh, William Jarvis is in decent nick. I think he's two winners in the second from, from four runners okay. uh, in, the, in the last fortnight. Uh, and I think she'd be the one to put it up to the jolly. Mm, okay, all right. So I'm all over Queen Power. I think the race tactically sets up for her. Lavender's blue, probably the danger. Lady Bothop says kills. What about Pat? Yeah, when we first put the prices out, Dave, at the start of the week, the, the, the fast moving horse was Lavender's Blue. Uh, so she comes here all guns blazing and, and, and is a popular order. Funny enough, uh, Queen Power and Lavender's Blue have met before in May of 2019. They met at levels and Queen Power won by a neck. And uh, it's amazing, two years on, they've, they've run to a very similar level of form since. Uh, Lavender's Blue has got that recent win. Like Kiel's, you know, you, you get tired of putting a name in the notebook saying, yeah, I can mark that one up for an unlucky defeat. But uh, this is wide open new market. She should surely get a clear run. But I, I keep thinking, God, so Michael's keeping a five-year-old mare in training. He obviously thinks she's capable of winning a, not just a group two, which this is, but, but a group one. So that's very, very telling. I'm sure she'll come here very fit. But I, I'll just keep with Lavender's Blue. She won last time. Maybe that's a good habit to get into and she can win this one. Okay, Pat, I think you're absolutely right. They left a bit on the table, didn't they, with Queen Power last year. It's all about girl power on Sunday. 3.40 on Sunday. Another piece de la resistance on this weekend for you. It is the 1,000 guineas. Uh, first news breaking on Friday morning when we were recording. No pretty gorgeous. Does that mean we are going to see a very short price favourite, Paul Keady? Um, well, we just are. We've already got a very short price favourite, which you could not have predicted um, back in October, November time when it was like the 2000 guineas, 7 to 1 the field, and the very short price favourite, Santa Barbara, wasn't even in the betting. Uh, it's, it's one of those, isn't it? It's the strength in depth of the Aidan O'Brien team. She's won one maiden, um, one that didn't work out particularly well. Yet, what she's been showing at home has. Uh, has been amazing by all accounts. In fact, you know we are used to Aidan O'Brien telling telling us after a horse has bolted up in a in a good race that you know he's done things we haven't seen before, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we we'll, we'll sort of you know take the Mickey and criticise and say, oh look, here's another one. They're trying to get the stud fees up already. <laughs> yeah, uh, you right. know what I mean? But he very rarely does it beforehand. The PR game basically. Yeah, exactly. But he very rarely does it beforehand. And yet in his. Um, in his um, racing post, Stable Tour, he said she works extra special, always has done. Uh, you know, I mean, the clues are there. I mean, you know, people like me that, you know, I don't need an excuse to oppose a short price favourite and certainly don't need an ex excuse to oppose a once race maiden winner in a, in a classic um, with two and a half stone to find. Like, you know what I mean? But you sort of get the feeling it's almost inevitable. Yeah, it's them in inverted commas, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah, she was 33 to 1, Pat, wasn't she? Let's come to you before we get the selections from the panel. Gills has, has basically told us, you know, if this takes a step forward and it's not too green, it's going to be very, very hard to beat. She was 33 to 1, into around about 7 to 4 at the start of the week. She's hardening up all the time. Now no Pretty Gorgeous, who was a second favourite. I mean, the reason why I'm saying very short pro, how low could she go? Well, it's incredible, isn't it? You're, you're having to do it on Homer. I mean, when she won first time out at uh, the Cara, she won well enough, but we were we were we were thinking, yeah, yeah, well, they, you know, it's a conveyor belt, isn't it? There'll be another five or six come out and win just like that. Um, the, the form doesn't look marvellous, you know. She just looked like, yeah, she's going to be a very decent filly, uh, and we wait for the next three or four to come out and uh, even be even more impressive. That never materialised, and really, she's just shortened up throughout the month by month. She gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And she's had the one run. She's got stall number one, which isn't going to be a good draw for her. You've got more reasons not to back her than to back her. Well done if you're on at the sexy prices. I'd be desperately hard pushed to say to someone, yeah, she's value around about five to four. 
But as we're all sitting here, we could all think, yeah, she could whiz, whiz in and be the next superstar of racing. And Aidan O'Brien, every trainer uh, article that he's done about horses for the season, he's always, always been very, very high on this filly. May, maybe she is just the real deal. At five to four, I wouldn't want to pay that to find out, though. I'd rather back a few other horses each way in the race. Much depends how she goes in the market and what happens on the Saturday in the Guineas, of course. If Aiden wins with uh, Wembley or Battleground, then the, the momentum will really be behind Santa Barbara. But as a punter, I, I think it'd be very hard pushed to back this one at five to four, but very much in the, yes, of course, it can be a good thing section. Mm, very interesting then. Uh, yeah, still one. They would, of all the draws, they could have picked out the hat. That wouldn't have been it, would it? No, but I mean, they're dropping. There's only 12 runners. The stalls are in the centre. It all depends on where they go. Mother Earth is in the race, isn't uh, it? So that might be the, the hair. Yeah, it all like. depends. Well, it, it might be, but I mean, she's got Group 1 form herself, is not it? You know, I mean, she's not going there as a complete no-hoper. No, no, definitely not. Uh, you know, so, you know, I would just, if you go back a couple of years ago, when Magna Grisha won the Guineas, that was the last time the stalls were in the centre, only three horses came stand side. Um, one of them was Magna Grisha. You, you know, you'd imagine more of them are going to come over, but sometimes they go to the other side, don't they? Yeah. You know, so... We'll have to wait and see, but she, she'll drop in anyway. Um, she might be a superstar. I can't back her like that. But when you look at it, you have to remember that, as with last year's Colts, they weren't all that good, right? you know. And now we've got we've got two British trial winners, Sacred and Alcohol Free, who have got to be very doubtful stayers. Yeah. Uh, an extra furlough. Play the will they stay game, they don't, don't we? And I don't think Alcohol Free advertised that she was going to get the trip. Um, Sacred looked a bit stronger, but apparently Ryan Moore said afterwards she's a seven furlong filly. Yeah. Um, like I mean, he knows he's going to ride um, the Fab anyway. So, but um, so what we've got is a strong favour with very weak form claims, um, and we've got others. Just the next couple in the betting have strong form claims, but a lot unlikely to stay. Uh, and so I'm, I'm thinking, well, the Fab will probably win, but you might be able to get a big price one in the frame. And I keep coming back to Fev Rover. I just think yeah, she's, she's been, nice filly. She's been underestimated. She's from a, you know, she's not from a small yard. She's in a massive yard, but doesn't have massive owners. You know what I mean? Richard Farr, he trains loads and loads of winners um, all the time. Um, but he doesn't have the big powerhouse um, owners that, you know, the, the, the Shakes or whatever, or Coolmore or anybody like that. So, you know, it, it, it's from a small group of owners. Uh, but she's very good. She, she improved virtually every single run last year. Mm. She won a good race in France. She won a good race at Sandown. Um, she didn't quite get a run on a race in the Marcel Boussac. I'm not saying she would have won it, but I, I'm, I, I reckon that she definitely stayed. She was short price for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And she's, you know, she's a decent horse. I mean, she was 20 to 1 before um, the second favourite came out. There's only 12 runners. I think she'd be in the frame. It'd be a great story, wouldn't it, for Nick Bradley and his supporters and, 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 and the racing team that do such a good job with these horses. I like her. I will have a little bit on her. Uh, I'm, big fun, I'm a big fan of Saffron as well, whether I can quite see her. I think she'll reverse that form. I think she will, yeah, because she'll stay stronger. Yeah. She, she was hitting the line, wasn't she? And as much as Jane Jabberheim said she was ready, you have to think she'll come on a bit for that. But Thunder Beauty for Ken Condon, closely tied in with Feb Rover as well. Go back to some of her earlier form. A form, you know, in Ireland, in the Moigler, she looks like she might be the three-year-old in the pack to me. She might want a bit further this year, but Ken Condon's a classic winning trainer. We've seen what he can do with Roman eyes and likes of that. At a big price from a stand-side draw, I think she'll run well as well. So we're all taking on the Fav, Pat. Which one are you going with? Uh, I'm just going to... This is the sort of race where you could see Santa Barbara winning and 250 to one chances being second or third, isn't it? But I, I do look at Saffron Beach and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think she'll reverse the form with Sacred over the extra furlong. Saffron Beach will run a big race. Whether she can beat uh, the hype filly remains to be seen. Um, Thunder Beauty, yeah, I respect that one as well. I'd be looking maybe with the without the favourite market here and just pretend Santa Barbara isn't in the race. You'll have a whole host of betting opportunities on our Bet365 site. Uh, maybe just play without Santa Barbara in the market and back a few at a big price. Santa Barbara, then. Are you hoping to cruise along with this anti-post gamble? Really can't wait to see the feedback on what you're on. Let us know. Weekend winner time. Let's go straight to Paul Keeley then because you're going for one in the classic. Yeah, I'm going to go with Muta Sarbeck. I think um, I just really was impressed with the with, with the speed. Okay, it's not you know it's not a massively confident nap. You can't be when when you're in a gu guineas. But I think you know he, he just showed a really really good turn of foot by um, Invincible Spirit. Same star as Kingman um, out of Ganati, who won the guineas on her third start. Um, 
I think you'd be a big player. And when William Haggis, after he won that handicap at the Craven meeting, said, I can't wait to make him into a stallion, everyone really pricked their ears, didn't they? So a lot of confidence there, I think, from the team. A supplementary nap then for Paul Keeley. Pat Cooney. Yeah, you took it for me, the 305 Sebastopol, trained by Tom Lacey, excellent trainer. This horse wants good ground, he's going to get that. And he came back to form last time out off the same mark. He's a decent horse, this fella. So Sebastopol, Tom Lacey, three or five, Utoxeter. 5.25, Crossford, Ryan Moore. Keep it simple. Watch him back at the Craven meeting. Green as grass. There's a big one in him. Really like him for Team Charlie Hills. There is your weekend travel. Well, that's it for this weekend. Classic stuff here on What A Shout. Thank you for watching. Thank you for Declan McDonough for that lovely piece that he gave us on his way back from Punchestown. Thank you, Paul Keeley. What does the weekend hold? Uh, the weekend holds um, watching a lot of racing and, uh, and doing very little else. Absolutely. Quite right. We're nearly out of this, kills, aren't we? But this is one where we'd be happy we to, are, yeah. and to I'm be glued to, to the well, To be fair, I've got to work. I've got to find some winners for Sunday as well on, on Saturday. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm officially working tomorrow, which I don't normally do on a Saturday afternoon. But... So Saturday, 6pm, you'll be able to get them on the members section. Exactly. Great stuff. Thank you, Paul Keeley. Thank you, Pat Cooney. Back at home this weekend. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed sound down, but uh, you're going to enjoy Newmarket, albeit from the comfort of uh, at home. Absolutely. Loads of racing to look at then. Do gamble responsibly. That's what it's all about. Have some fun with it. Do download the free Must Have Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or the Google Play Store. And until next week, enjoy the sport.